Welcome back to another episode of a very British space program. You find us in Mission Control. We're just looking for some. Uh, well, we're looking for some contracts because we need to earn some money, money, money. Because we're we're a little short on it. We've got a lot of long-term missions out there. So uh, today we're going to start off with a money mission. Please join us. So here we are on the launch pad, 18th of July, 1963, going on up. And this is basically a mission to try and put some money back into our dwindling budgets. We don't get much from the UK government, obviously, because they are not the richest of nations. And we're basically running off scientific income and, and the money that we've got from obviously selling all of the, the stuff we've managed to develop. Um, and this is going to be a... Uh, another geostationary communication satellite and we're using the Newton 1 bus that we've used before. Um, hopefully we're going to start getting some funds in from our long-term missions uh, but we will see, we will see. So um, this is going to head up into orbit first of all and it's exactly the same craft that we've used before for missions like this. Interesting, while this is happening we actually hear that uh, the USA has gone suborbital with a plane, which is uh, intriguing. We want to actually have a look at it, see if it's anything like the white javelin. Um, and anyway, we're, we're into orbit with our, our craft right now. And you see it starts to roll. And that's a concern because we've used this craft before in exactly this form. And we're doing our burn out now from our uh, ascending uh, ascending node. I'm just burning out there to... Uh, to uh, the correct orbital height and it's rolling all over the place which is really quite concerning so i am going to try and use a bit of the computer systems to give us a, a rough idea of where it is so we actually plot a, a node on the uh, descending uh, node at this point we're ascending one yeah and um what we're actually looking for is to try and get as close to that orbit as possible now one of the issues we have is that this is not in the perfect location where we've actually done this orbit so we're actually going to start playing around a little bit with the uh, radial and radial out just to, to change the alignment of the orbit a bit. You can see just change the periaps and, and apoaps a bit just to give us just a, a little play around there because I don't want to refire the engine too much. I want to get this done in one go. And we cancel out that spin and there we go. We're just going to align that so it gets sunlight and it can advance its way out towards geostationary position. And then we're going to fire the engines and off we go. So anyway, yeah. We're a little concerned that they may have copied, the USA may have copied some of our white uh, white javelin designs. They were interested in the Avro Canada team, particularly uh, Jim Chamberlain, before we got him on our uh, capsule program. So we're concerned they may have stolen or borrowed, borrowed some of our design ideas. So we'll have to see how that goes. Anyway, 9th of September, 1963. This is Hesperus 1C arriving at Mars. And we don't really need to do much with this craft on its arrival into the Mars sphere of influence. It's it's on a reasonable sort of trajectory as it is. Uh, we've got, you know, potentially a slight a slight change in burn there. We're going to uh, circularization burn and whatnot. But we're, we're going to actually put a marker down for when it needs to do its circularization or its capture burn. It's not going to be a circularization. It's going to be a capture. We're going to do a light, a loose capture, first of all. And we can assess what's going on with the 1C. Um, so we're going to set that and then we're going to jump over because it is the 12th of September 1963 and the Hesperus 1D arrives. So we've now got both craft in the Mars sphere of influence and it's going to do just a, a little burn just uh, at the start just to correct its inclination so that it's going to come in at about 90 degrees. Uh, to to the to the planet we want to try and get into a sort of polar orbit with this one um you can see there what isn't that lovely lovely view no, absolutely nothing to see because it's so far away from anything and it's just going to do a little bit of a burn there with the rcs just to sort of change its potential inclination and that's it, it done so next up we've already started transmitting science back so we've completed the flyback mission that's money 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 so hesperus one uh, sorry Ugh. Hesperus 1C is going to begin its capture burn and it's going to go for just this uh, this odd burn that it's going. It's just going to try and get into uh, any orbit. Any orbit is fine for this mission. Uh, 1C is the one that's potentially going to have more fuel and it's going to give us more interest. So it gets itself into a sort of highly inclined retrograde orbit, which is not ideal for a lot of things, but it does give us some lovely pictures. We can start transmitting the science back and we can start getting money back from our contract. So we're now getting money back from the science around Mars contract finally. And we can also get money for a Mar Mars orbital contract, which is wonderful as well. So that is Hesper C completing that. So everything we get now is bonus. And you can see there its orbit is um, 
well it's special but we're, we're wondering if we can do anything with that orbit is there anything you know interesting we can do is there any interactions we can look at so we're going to potentially have to have a look at that and see what we can do i think we may look at potentially going maybe going for something with the moons but we'll we'll have to have a think about that so anyway we have uh Hesperus 1D, it's going to try and get into polar orbit. So we're setting its polar orbit sort of burn. We know how much it's going to have. It's It's got quite a bit of fuel on it. And this is hopefully going to act as a little bit of a, a transmitter if we send any more craft here. And look at that view. Isn't that stunning? So we're getting all these pictures back because all these, these craft have got cameras on them. And it's going to come along. It's going to come into a position where it can fire its engines. Um, and there we go. We're about ready. Almost. There we go. Firing the engines. Wonderful. And this is going to take it into a polar orbit and it's going to hold that polar orbit. Um, I think we've got enough fuel for this. It's about whether we've got enough fuel to really refine it anymore. So there we go. We are now captured and we're just bringing it down. There we go. Um, and this thing will, will basically be playing around with its orbit a little bit just to get the nicest orbit we can, the best communication we can. We can see it's got quite a bit of fuel left in it. So potentially we can uh, we can rearrange it a little bit and do some interesting things with it potentially but if nothing else it can act to gather science from around the, the mars area in the high and low orbit and, and get all the stuff that we really want we want that science so it can, we can sell it that's what basically what we want to do we can use it for our own research but we we need money we want to sell it a little bit so you know anybody that wants to buy any research on mars is welcome to approach us we are willing to sell absolutely everything we've got so that's hesperus 1d we're going to leave that there um hopefully that funding income will really support us after a difficult six months so Hesperus 1C, however, it is decided that this thing is going to do flyby missions of the moon. So that's what we're actually going to aim to do. First of all, we're going to go with Deimos. Um, and this is going to help us to understand their characteristics before possibly landing or anything else on them. We are not going to try and get into orbit of them, particularly because we're coming in fast. We are coming in really fast. This is going to be a, f a fast fly past. Um, it's going to interestingly put us on a collision course with Mars or afterwards so if we have a problem with engines or anything or after this fly past well, we are uh, we're going to be pancaking into the surface which again we have a craft in orbit so you know there is a positive there we can actually uh, we can use this as a, as a way of gathering more data which is wonderful isn't it it's superb um so we're just going to prepare and of course because we're coming in in a retrograde orbit it's it's a little bit more difficult to to sort of play around with here um we are going to end up in this situation where uh, we're gonna we're gonna hit Mars, um, and so what we're doing now is we're just refining our orbit. We're just trying to bring it in down there, and and sort of align it a little bit with what we want. You can see here we're just gonna bring this in, and it is gonna be a fast encounter. We're not gonna get vast amounts of science, but we're gonna get enough science to make it interesting. So here we are, coming in on our little fly pass, and you're gonna see this and just how quickly we're going to go past here you can see so this is Deimos. Deimos is a very interesting uh, moon it's it's reasonable size you know not massive i'm not sure landing on it would be that difficult but then i think capturing round it would be difficult we've actually had a look at, at the uh, impact of our uh, engine on on us actually slowing around at Deimos, and it is it's, it's it's almost impossible with this craft we need a lot more kick there and we're getting a close look at this odd shadow on one side of Deimos, which is very strange we're still getting sunlight onto us we're still transmitting back to earth right now and then we pass into the shadow there and now now we're outside of the sphere of influence of Deimos. we're heading into mars you can see and so we're going to have to do a little emergency burning uh repulsing a firing sideways we want to try and reduce the use of our main engine because we only have a certain number of main engine burns on this we have five and i think we've already used uh, a few of them so this is uh this is us trying to basically it's not the most efficient oh there we go we're gonna actually going to resort to a main engine burn because we do need to get this out of this potential collision and if we don't manage it well there's no real point in having any more burns on the engine so the big concern is actually whether the row engine gives up we've had a lot of failures on these in the past particularly actually since these craft were launched we've had a number so the concern is that this engine may not go its full life so we're now missing Mars. We're going into a, a low sort of pass by Mars. And as we come around, we're actually going to refine our, our flight just a little bit with RCS so that we can, there we go, just so that we can just make sure that one of our next burns is going to bring us 
into uh, into uh, interaction with Phobos because Phobos is going to be the second moon of, of Mars that we're going to try and hit a flyby with and this is you know again this is a real this is going to use a lot of our fuel here so we're going to be firing off there you can hear is actually just changing our orbit you can see we have to bring our orbit down a bit for that encounter you can see where our predicted predicted aim of orbit is going to be and again we're going to be heading into mars after this particularly probably because we're actually on this retrograde orbit for us to get these interactions and how we're going to fly past them and at what times and things like that um any change is probably a bad change for us. We have that low orbit around Mars right now, which allows us to do this stuff with you know less delta V, but it does make it risky. So we may end up with this one if it doesn't have the fuel left afterwards, that it may actually end up going into Mars. And again, that wouldn't be a negative for us because we have a craft in orbit. We're watching what's going on. So that's not a big issue for us. We can actually see a little bit about its atmosphere. In fact, it might be a positive if we want to actually go and land on Mars in the future, learning a bit about its atmosphere. That's probably going to be pretty useful, which we haven't done yet. We're basically looking from the surface. So there we go. We're going to try and get our, our final encounter of this uh, flight with Hesperus 1C. This is definitely a big science mission for us. We did not expect to be able to get much from these moons. And you see there, the encounter is coming. It's just a little bit. It's a very tight refinement we're having a hit on this. Um, and again, it is going to be a very, very short encounter. So there we go. There we go. We've now got on a route where we can get reasonably close to Phobos. And this is going to be the tight one. So there we go. We just have a look. We uh, this is this is small. It is tight. It is hard to get round. And we're just going to. We're trying to refine every tiny little bit. It's very much an RCS juggling maneuver here to try and get this is closer to, to Mars. So what we do know is that if we're on target for Mars after coming out of this, we're going to have to burn a lot of fuel. And you can see our tanks are almost dry right now. We have we've used an awful lot of our Delta V, an awful lot of our fuel to achieve these these tasks. We could have done it more efficiently if we'd have waited, but we are in a we're in a rush, you know, we've got the Americans and the USSR bearing down on us and we want to try and put a marker down for them so that, you know, the world knows who, who the greatest empire is. I mean, who the greatest space agency is. Um, so here we go, just orbiting round and we're approaching now. So there's, there is Phobos coming round towards us and we're coming in towards Mars. You can see this track is going to take us right into Mars's atmosphere, right into its surface if we do not change it. So we could have been clever. We could have tried to change the angle we come past Phobos. But again, Phobos does not actually have a lot of mass. So it's not going to really change our orbit enough to even save us on this. And here we go, coming in really quite close, really quite fast. We're just going to skim past. We've got all the scientific in, in, in instruments firing up a maximum right now. The electric charge that we have on this craft is pretty much maxed out at the moment, but it's going to drain quickly when these things are firing. So here we go. We're going to try and transmit the science as we're going as well. We've got craft that are going to try and support it. We're going to try and get every drop of data out of this because this is potentially the last thing we're going to get from this craft. It's not going to provide much more after this. You see just how close it comes to that rocky, rocky moon there. And Phobos is a really odd shape, isn't it? Look at the scars on the surface and it's sort of lumpy and shadowed. It's very different to Deimos. It doesn't look anything like our moon. It's very much it potentially looks like a captured asteroid or something, which makes, makes Mars really even more interesting, more of a an odd sort of thing. It's on an, a highly inclined orbit as well. So, yeah, it's an interesting little cr sort of thing floating around there. But as we come past it, there we go, we're now heading out of it and we can see exactly where we're about to go. We are heading straight into Mars right now. We uh, we have one shot here, which is use every single piece of fuel and thrust we have to get us out of this because we are still transmitting fly science that we picked up at Phobos. We've got a lot of science on this craft that we need to get rid of there. And we're just gonna fire up every piece of RCS we have. We're firing everything we have got now. We don't care about the fuel usage. This thing's basically spent. All we wanna do now is put it into orbit because it might be able to actually transmit orbit science if it does that. And if it can last a bit longer, we can actually use it as a relay potentially for future missions. So it has a double bonus there. So there we are holding up firing every single piece of fuel we've got and this thing this thing is going to basically be almost dead in the water when we've finished 
Um, Hesperus 1D is going to stay in its current orbit for a few months before we start bringing it down into a more circular orbit around the low Mars orbit. It's going to be gathering the science around Mars, getting all of the juicy science it can, sending that back to the to, to Earth, to our, to our scientists to analyze it. Hesperus 1C, it's going to stay in orbit, hopefully, because I think we've just about got it there. It's going to stay in orbit uh, and transmit data as quickly as possible from its flybys. And then, you know, as it flies over Mars, it's going to help out with some of that scientific recovery. But as it's saving itself from a Mars encounter and as it starts to repair its longer term mission is to start transmitting data back and start giving us all the juicy science that we need from us until next time from the Mars and its twins. Have a great one.